Hi, yes, it's the LaCroix 9384C oscilloscope repair again, because people just could not let this one go. Um, if you haven't seen the previous videos, please do, otherwise this uh, won't make much sense to you. I'll link them in down below. Now, people wanted me to power this thing up, even though it still has that short on the 3.3 volt rail, and see if it works. Well, okay. Fair enough, here we go. I'm about to power the thing up. I've got my um, uh, power supply around the back here for the 3.3 volt rail. My leads aren't long enough, so um, yeah, sorry about that. You can't see it, but it's set to 3.3 volts. And it'll be drawing about 10 or 11 amps. And there it is, down in there. I've got that connected down into the 3.3 volt rail with the alligator clip there. And I'm gonna power the rest from the main power supply. So let's power this sucker up and see what happens to it. Here we go. I'm going to try and do it, try and power up the rails at the same time. Let's give it a go. And there we go. And yes, it's drawing 12.6 amps. Yes, I've got the memory um, installed again. I've got the uh, processor board installed again. And I'm getting Nothing. Zip. I think it should have uh, should have powered up by now. No. No. I think it's uh, I think it's dead, folks. There you go. I might wind the wick up on the supply a little bit because I know there is a couple hundred millivolts dropping those leads. So um, there's it. Psh. Sorry. Nothing. Zip. Nada. What? Thanks for playing. Well, as it turns out, I just tried to measure the other rails and the uh, five volt rails up, the minus five volt rail up is up, but I don't see the um, minus two volt rail. I don't see the plus minus, um, I, I think uh, 15 volt rails. This is one sick puppy indeed. So I, uh, it may become more of a, a bloody power supply repair instead of and oscilloscope repair, but, ah, oh, man, fail. I'd expect to, even if the plus minus 12 volts didn't go, I'd expect to see at least the uh, processor powered up. Now I've opened up this power supply. Don't get excited. I'm not going to do a bloody repair on the power supply today. I've got very limited uh, time. And um, I, it, the plus, I've measured it again without any load and the plus minus 15 volt rails have uh, come back but there is still the uh, two volt rail, which is missing. So plus five, minus five, and plus minus 15 are all working just fine, but that uh, two volt rail has died. Now, I would have expected, um, you know, the thing to uh, power up with that, but when I, um, at, you know, at least the main processor and uh, stuff like that to power up and at least give me something on the display, but those, but that plus minus 15 volt, uh, those plus minus 15 volt rails die when I hook it to the board under load. So maybe it's taking out uh, something else as well. And well, this is just one very sick puppy. Now, as for the power supply itself, I cannot see anything that's obviously blowing at all. No blowing um, caps, no blowing. Uh, power resistors, you know, no charred power resistors or anything like that. Um, you know, you give it the smell test, nothing really smells um, out of place in the thing. Um, no, you know, big charred uh, power diodes or anything like that. And it, you know, it, um, it looks just fine and dandy. So as far as the visuals go, it's, uh, you know, no problem at all. So this thing would have to be, um, taken apart, dissected, things tested and measured, and well, yeah, I, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna bother. Yeah, yeah, have a whinge. Um, I just, I don't think I wanna spend any more time on this thing, really. It's just, you know, I, I can't see it being a good investment, that's all. So, I, I don't know, I, uh, give me your thoughts. Let me know, but geez, yeah, I just don't think I want to spend the time troubleshooting this bloody power supply as and much as an interesting video it might make, perhaps. I don't know. Anyway, it's not going to happen today.
Sorry, folks. And for those who ask, this busted relay has absolutely nothing to do with the short at all. I believe this happened during the initial uh, teardown because it was a bastard. Several screws got um, threaded and caught and all sorts of things, and I was levering the board out. So I'm not sure if that uh, happened um, during my teardown or not. I don't actually remember it happening, but I can only presume that it did happen during that. It's got nothing to do with it. It's just a little break in the case of a relay. It's nothing. And just to satisfy those who are harping on about removing this second ASIC here, fine, I'll remove the second ASIC and see if the short goes away. It's not, but I'll do it anyway. Now, this is a pain in the arse. This is stuck on to this chip, good and proper with uh, thermal adhesive, and you're not gonna get that off in a hurry, um, short of some nasty chemicals or something like that, which I don't um, have, and really, um, the proper way to get rid of, uh, to suck off one of these uh, chips is to use a hot air gun and a proper QFP attachment to your hot air gun after you've got the heat sink off because this is a massive thermal mass here. So I, you know, you could probably heat it up um, with like a, you know, something horrible and nasty like a blowtorch and lift it off with pliers maybe, but ugh, it's going to be really, really horrible. So unless you absolutely, absolutely desperately needed this chip to be intact when you took it off, um, which we don't, we just want to get the thing off and see if it makes a difference. Well, the easiest way to do it is to just cut all the pins around there. And uh, there's several ways to do it. You could try and get in there with a scalpel, but the leverage, um, uh, you know, the, the angles in there aren't very good with the other heat sinks in the way and stuff like that. So. Um, I think I will just uh, dremel the pins off and see if that works. Let's give it a go. Well, I was going to try the dremel, <laughs> but the um, sanding discs I've got are unfortunately um, just slightly too big to get in there. What a absolute bummer, really. Um, that's not very nice at all. So I think we're going to have to, and really the heat sink is too high, so even if I had a smaller disc to get in there, um, really the uh, spindle is going to end up, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I don't think I'm going to be able to get the angle in there. So what I, I am going to get in there with the scalpel blade and push it across like that and maybe that's not bad. The problem with this is that you put in a bit of shear force on those pins so you could actually damage a pad which isn't that great so but we don't necessarily care a huge amount about that we just really want to get the get the sucker off there we go I think I managed to get all the way along one side I should be able to do the other side and uh, the other three sides and pop this sucker off And look at that, we've got it levered up like that. No problems at all. And here she comes. Ta-da, there we go. And there are those pins left over on there you can see it looks like we didn't do any damage to any of the pads i was uh, relatively careful i was using the correct uh, tongue angle there but there are a hell of a lot of leftover pins on there which we need to go over with the uh, soldering iron and just uh, wipe those pins off the pads and we'll be left with the pads because obviously you know <laughs> they could be uh, shorting out uh, all sorts of things so we want to get rid of those and check this out there's a fiducial mark on the board there you can see it and usually these are outside the uh, chip as a reference but they've put this one under the chip like that so the um, vision system on the pick and place machine comes and finds the center of that chip it looks like it's directly in the center of like that I'm assuming that it is um, exactly the center and they've put it under the chip instead of the more familiar place sort of you know two 
marks outside the chip like that. Unusual. And here we go, we're going to wipe off our pins. Now you have to be really careful here. You've got to set your um, iron to a very low uh, temperature, like under 300, so that you don't uh, apply excessive heat to the pad. Just enough temperature so that you can wipe these pins off. And the other thing is, you don't want to wipe in this direction like that, because then that puts um, increased pressure on the uh, pads and you can lift the pads. So you want to swipe it long ways on the pad like that. So let's give it a go. Here we go. And there we go. If we just swipe across, we can remove those pins fairly easily. You might have to do the odd second pass here and there and you can clean it up with a solder wick later if you wanted to solder in a new chip but we don't want to do that we just want to uh, ensure that all the pins are gone and we can then measure the rail again And there you go, you should be left with a uh, whole row of uh, very nicely tinned pads. Now, if you wanted to, uh, if you're soldering a new chip on those, you might, of course, go and uh, solder wick uh, some of the rest of it off. But uh, that is a very nice result. And that was a pretty horrible way to rip a chip off like that. But uh, really, I think that's probably the best uh, available option I um, had to hand, really, considering that we didn't have to reuse the uh, chip at all. So, yeah, well, only one thing left to do. Let's measure that power rail. I bet you it's exactly the same. All right, here we go. Let's short our probes again. Compensate for that. What were we getting before our 0.11 ohms on our 3.3 volt rail? There we go. It's pretty. It's going to be pretty repeatable, as we saw last time. I don't mind these probes they're pretty good and uh, one two three four five six and here is our 3.3 volt rail let's see what we get folks ha 0.14 there you go so it um, that makes sense it has um yes it has gone up from 0.11 to 0.14 but that's what you'd expect we've got one quarter of the chips um, actually, um, you know, if, if the theory is correct, then all, you know, something happened to the 3.3 volt rail and it took out all four ASICs on that particular 3.3 um, uh, volt rail. So there you go. You would expect it to go up a little bit like that because we've now taken out one fourth of the shorted chips. But I reckon that all of them are shorted. That sort of confirms the original theory that well, the heat had nothing, that tiny little, what, three or four degrees C difference between this chip and the others, as I said, it, it didn't add up at all because just the extra power dissipation in there, it didn't, uh, you know, it, it just didn't make sense for it only to rise for a couple of degrees Celsius. All right, so let's see what that translates to into with uh, current. We expect it um, to be slightly less than what we we're getting before, which was around uh, 10 amps or something without power in the other rails. So the other rails aren't powered at all. And um, of course, it's a non we've already determined it's a non-linear uh, thing. So, um, you know, we expect it maybe to drop to, I don't know, 8 amps or something like that. Maybe 9 or something like that, because it is going to be shared across the... Um, ASICs here, of course, and if we're and if our theory is right about the four, four ASICs all being equally blown or reasonably equally blown, we should see a percentage decrease. So let's have a look. Ta-da! There we go. 8.8 .8 amps. It has actually dropped by you know uh, 1.2 amps or thereabouts. I'm not exactly sure uh, exactly what the value was last time, but it was around about 10 amps or so. So there you go. It's dropped in proportion, and I'm sure. If we desoldered the other chips one by one and measured the current, it would drop in proportion as well. So there you have it. I don't think there's uh, much option left but to just simply give up on this thing, as I said last time. Looks like all four of these chips are shorted out. 
on that rail. So something happened to the power supply. We got a spike on there, something. It took out the rail. Um, no, we're not gonna be able to get these uh, chips anywhere. No, I'm not gonna solder them back in. I don't care, it's not, even if I could get the chips. Ah, oh, man, it's not worth the effort. And fixing that power supply and getting it all going again for an ancient scope like this, it, nah, there's no point. Um, sorry, folks, so there you go. Eh, complain all you like, but I think this one is dead, and I hope I cleared up a few things that people wanted me to do on this thing. It definitely is a short inside the chips on the 3.3 volt rail. Something happened to that rail, a spike or whatever, and it took out all four ASICs on there. And I think if we suck off those ASICs, and yeah, we'd eventually uh, get rid of the short. whoop de doo What do we do then? Ugh. Makes for a great, you know, paperweight. I don't know. Catch you next time.